Hello, welcome to U.S. Immigration Updates. The B-1 or B-2 visa is a temporary, non-immigrant visa that allows the holder to travel to the United States for either business or tourism purposes. The applicants can avail a 10-year, multiple entry to the U.S. by submitting their application for non-immigrant visas. B-1 visa does not necessarily apply only to individuals who wish to gain employment in the United States but can also be used for a variety of business-related activities such as negotiations, trainings and meetings for which the individual will not be paid within the country. On the other hand, B-2 visa is not only limited to individuals for tourism purposes, but also for travel related to seeking medical treatment or other personal purposes. In this video, we will discuss the most likely asked questions during your B-1-B-2 interview and how to answer them. If you are interested in any of these topics, please stick around till the end of this video for your immigration updates. If you are liking this video, please hit the subscribe button, like this video and click the bell icon. So that you can instantly receive any new updates right on your YouTube home page of your smartphone or smart devices. Now, let's get into the video. So here are the most curated questions which you should be prepared for your interview. Number 1. What is the purpose of your visit to the US? In reply to this question, you must state the reason for your visit, whether it is for business purposes, or to visit family and friends, or for a holiday, etc. Number 2. Have you traveled to the United States before? You may answer this question with a simple yes or no. The consulate may check to verify your statement. Number 3. Do you have relatives in the United States? You should provide the names of your close relatives in the US, if any, along with their relationship to you. There is no need to provide other details unless requested by the consulate. Number 4. Who will be sponsoring your visit? You should mention the name of the individual who will be sponsoring your visit. Number 5. Where will you be residing in the United States? You should provide the full address of the place where you will be residing during your visit. Make sure that the address you provide the consulate matches the one provided on your visa application. Number 6. What does, the individual sponsoring your visit, do for a living, and how much do they earn? You should provide the name of the organization at which the individual sponsoring your visa is employed along with their designation and disclose their annual income. Financial documents must be carried to support your answer, and the amount stated during the interview must correspond with the figure entered in your visa application. Number 7. How long has, the individual sponsoring your visit, been in the United States? You should answer the question with the number of years that the individual has been residing in the United States. Number 8. Which visa is, the individual sponsoring your visit, on? You should answer with the name slash number of the visa. For instance, if the individual is employed in the United States, say that they are on H1 or L1 visa. Number 9. Did, the individual sponsoring your visit, study in the United States? If yes, you should provide details regarding the degree they obtained and the university in which he or she studied. Number 10. What visa did, the individual sponsoring your visit, enter the United States on? In case your relative has been residing in the United States for a long time and arrived on a student visa before obtaining a work visa, mention the same during the interview. Number 11. Is, the individual sponsoring your visit, married? You should provide the true answer dash yes if married, and no if not. Number 12. Does, the individual sponsoring your visit, have any children? If yes, mention the number of children they have. Number 13. Will your spouse be accompanying you on your visit to the United States? You should answer yes if someone will be traveling with you, or no if no one will be accompanying you on your visit. Number 14. Why are you traveling alone? This question is mainly asked when an individual travels alone to the United States. You should provide the true reason as to why you are traveling. In case you are married and are visiting for tourism purposes, mention that your spouse was unable to get leave from work or state the true reason as to why they could not make it. Number 15. When do you plan to visit the United States? You should mention the month in which you will be visiting the country. Number 16. What is the reason for traveling at that particular time? You should provide the reason why you have chosen that particular month to visit the United States, whether it is to attend an event, or to enjoy the weather at a certain time of year, or any other reason that is true. Number 17. What do you plan to do in the United States? You should answer with your plans for the visit, whether it is to visit popular tourist destinations, if so, mention the spots you wish to visit, or whether to spend time with your family and friends, etc. Number 18. What are the places you wish to visit in the United States? You should mention the names of popular tourist destinations, like Disneyland, Niagara Falls, Las Vegas, etc., or other places you wish to visit while in the country. Number 19. Have you booked your tickets? The answer will depend based on your situation but provide the true answer. Number 20. 
Have you booked your return tickets and availed medical insurance? The answer is again subjective and will depend on your situation but provide the true answer. Number 21. What are the expenses you will be expecting to incur on this visit? You should mention the individual who will be sponsoring your visit and give a brief estimate of your budget and how much money you are expecting to spend while in the United States. Number 22. Have you traveled abroad before this trip? You should mention the countries you have been to prior to your impending visit to the United States. Number 25. How long will you be residing in the United States? You should provide the duration and number of months that you will be residing in the country on your visit. Number 26. Why do you wish to stay for so long? Can't you plan a shorter trip? This question is usually asked when applicants have planned a trip for six months or more. You should respond with the reason for your stay and provide a comprehensive explanation as to why you will be residing so long in the country. Number 27. What guarantee do we have that you will return? You should mention that you have a family in your country and provide other reasons as to why you will be returning after your visit. You can mention your job or business, if any, and your dependents who require your presence in the country. Number 28. When did you last meet, the individual sponsoring your visit? You should respond with the month and year in which you last met the individual who will be sponsoring your visit. The consulate may call them and verify your response so make sure to be precise about your answer. Number 29. When did, the individual sponsoring your visit, last visit the home country? You should mention the month and year in which the individual who will be sponsoring your visa last the home country. You should make sure your response is accurate as the consulate may call your sponsor to verify that authenticity of the details you have provided. Number 30. When does, the individual sponsoring your visit, intend to visit again? If your sponsor is visiting the home country anytime soon, mention the month and year in which they have planned their trip. If they have no such plans, disclose the same to the consulate. Number 31. Where do you stay in here, home country? You should provide details of your residential address in the country. Number 32. Where do you work and what is your job profile? You should provide details of the company at which you work, what roles and responsibilities you fulfill, and how long you have been working with the company. Make sure that the information you provide is accurate as it will be cross-checked by the consulate. Number 33. What is your annual income? You should pass bond with your annual CTC and provide the accurate amount you earn at your current organization as it will be cross-verified by the consulate. It is also recommended that you carry the necessary financial documents to support your statement. Number 34. Have you applied for leave? This question is asked if you are currently employed. If you are employed, state that you have applied for leave for the duration of your visit. If you are unemployed, state the same to the consulate. It is advised that you carry your leave certificate, application from your employer if you have taken leave to go for the trip. Number 35. How do you plan to fund your visit? This question is usually asked when the applicant does not earn a sufficient amount to go on an international trip. In this case, you can tell the consulate that your expenses will be looked after by the individual who will be sponsoring your visit. Number 36. Applicants who have their own business may be asked who will look after their business in their absence. If you have already hired someone to look after your business when you're away, you can reveal the same to the consulate along with information about the person. If you have not hired anyone to take care of your business while you're away, you may simply state that it will be taken care of by your partner. Number 37. Applicants who are retired will be asked how much pension they receive. You should respond with how much money you receive through your pension fund and make sure that the amount you disclose is accurate as it will be cross-checked by the authorities. Number 38. What assets do you hold in your country? To answer this question, you can mention all the assets you possess, like residential or commercial properties, motor vehicles, etc. It is essential to mention all the immovable properties you own as the consulate will get a guarantee that you will return back to capitalize on your assets. Number 39. Who will look after your property while you are away? If you have requested your family or friends to look after your property while you are away, you can mention the same to the consulate along with details about the individual whom you have entrusted to take care of your property. Number 40. Do you own a credit card? In case you possess a credit card, show it to the consulate and provide the details requested. If not, just tell them that you do not own one at the moment. Number 41. Will you be working in the United States? Whether you are applying for a H-1 visa or a H-2 visa, it is important to disclose whether or not you will be looking at job opportunities in the United States. If not, just tell them that the purpose of your visit is tourism and that you are not interested in looking for jobs or seeking employment in the country. Number 42. Married individuals may be asked, how many children they have and what the children do. You should respond to this question with how many children you currently have and what they do, that is if they are studying or working. If you have children in your home country, it is important to mention that too. Number 43. 
married individuals may also be asked about their children's date of birth. In this case, provide the accurate date on which your children were born as it will be cross-verified by the authorities. Also provide them with the names and addresses of your children, if requested. Apart from these questions, the consulate may also ask other questions to ensure that you are in sound physical and mental condition to travel to the United States. I hope you found this video helpful. We will release new video when more updates are available. U.S. Immigration Updates channel is dedicated to provide every information, visa processes that are required for your U.S. immigration journey. It is important to know about the United States immigration processing steps, visa application requirements, processing times, forms, fees and more. We will continue to provide every information for U.S. visitor visas such as B-1 and B-2, work visas such as L-1A, L-1B, H-1B, student visas, green card, immigrant visas, EB-1, EB-2, EB-3, EB-4, EB-5 and family-based immigrant visas. Thank you for visiting us today, we will see you in next video. If you haven't subscribed our channel yet, please subscribe our channel for more videos on U.S. immigration updates.